Hi everyone. So I'm going to talk about, about pronunciation. I need to work on my pronunciation, seems like. Um, so uh, today, especially, I'm going to focus on these reduced vowels and this sound that we call schwa. And uh, reduced vowels, there aren't very many of them, but uh, some languages don't have this, and you might find the idea um, difficult. Um, because basically vowels in English don't sound the way they look, and reduced vowels almost never sound the way that they look. Um, so, let's get into it. So, some of you will know this chart. Um, it's from colorvowelchart.org. I'm just reading right here. Um, and I was introduced to this by uh, an old coworker. Well, she wasn't old. She was a former coworker, and um, she used it in her classes to teach pronunciation and told me about it. And I think it's it's a really good way to uh, visualize vowel sounds in English. Um, so if you've never used this before um, as a learner or as a teacher, I really recommend you go look for this because it's very, very helpful. Okay, um, but for today, because we're talking about reduced vowels, we're really only talking about these three. So there's silver pin. Silver pin is the i sound, what we also call the short i sound in English, silver pin. Uh, purple shirt. We'll talk about purple shirt just a little bit, but purple shirt is this r sound, er, that sometimes takes the space of a vowel in English, especially in American English. Well, in English, in British English too, but it's a different sound. Um, and this cup of mustard sound. So just to very quickly introduce what these sounds are and how you make them, silver pin is, most learners confuse it with green pea, which is our very highest, most front E sound that you see in words like C or B or seen or green. Um, and then silver pin is sort of the shorter, more relaxed, a little bit lower version of that. So if you start from E and try to get your tongue down a little bit, E and, um, and try to use it in shorter words like silver or pin, um, then you'll you'll have the silver pin sound, okay? So if you're saying E, you feel yourself smiling, you feel your tongue going way up in your mouth, uh, you're probably saying E like green tea instead of I for silver pin, okay? So um, cup of mustard is, in theory, it's the easiest vowel sound in English because it's right, your tongue is right in the middle of your mouth, you don't have to round your lips or anything, you just uh, put your tongue right in the middle and relax and say, uh. So at least American English speakers say this when they're thinking, they say, uh. And zombies say this, right? Zombies go, uh. And the reason is it's a very relaxed and easy to make sound. Zombies don't put effort into their vowel sounds, so they don't say, ah, right? Vowel, uh, zombies don't say, oh. Zombies don't say, ah, right? They don't make any of these other vowel sounds. They make the cup of mustard sound right in the middle, very relaxed, very easy, and it's, uh. The difficulty that most learners have with this is they use a sound that's actually harder to make, a, a more, a sound that has more, uh, let's see, more muscles involved, more movement of the tongue, but it, it really should be right in the middle of your mouth, just, uh, well, that was it. I wasn't even meaning to say at that time, but just put your tongue in the middle, relax, and go, uh, and that's pretty close, okay? So both of these sounds, and not so much purple shirt, but definitely silver pin and cup of mustard, we use them to replace other sounds because they're easier, okay? They don't require as much moving your tongue around, and um, they're usually uh, more relaxed, right? You don't have to open wide 
or anything like that, or around your lips or anything like that, okay? So silver pin and cup of mustard, okay? Try to remember zombies. I know those are popular now. So if, you're, if your zombie sounds too excited, you're making the wrong sound, okay? So let's start by trying to pronounce these words just as carefully as you can, the way that you learned in school. Try it. I'll wait. You can pause me. Okay. So if you are trying to pronounce these words very carefully, you're probably using a, a vowel sound that's not cup of mustard and not silver pen. So for example, for the word from, if you think you're pronouncing it carefully, and especially the way you learned in junior high school or high school, whenever you were studying English, you might be saying something like from or from, uh, but both of those are wrong because from should have the cup of mustard vowel in it. Okay, um, so it should be very relaxed and very easy. It should be from, okay. And that word is almost always pronounced with that cup of mustard sound. So not ah, not oh, but uh, from. The other ones are a little bit trickier. So when you say them slowly, to or have, you're saying a version of them that most people still understand. Um, and if you listen to a formal speech, someone might actually say to or have. But often when we speak, these will be reduced. They will get shorter and lighter and easier. So even though to has the blue moon sound ooh in it sometimes, when you hear it in conversation, it's usually t or even d if you're in the United States. Okay. And have will not have the black cat ah eh, vowel, but it will have, it'll sound like huh, huh, right? And then of course it can get even shorter and lose the vowel completely and just become like I have, I, okay. My point is all of these get shorter or can get shorter when you say them in natural situations, okay? when you're not trying to say them the way that you learned in junior high school. Okay, so the last two are actually different. These ones are always pronounced with a reduced vowel, petted. So I'm American, so I say petted, not petted, but petted. The second vowel is always reduced. It's never pet head, right? It's always petted, okay? Um, and the second one, station, that looks like an O, but it's never pronounced station or station. It's always station, okay? So it's got that up-down rhythm, and the down is always the reduced cup of mustard vowel station, right? So if you try to say them in a sentence, I think you can understand this. Um, it goes from Tokyo to Beijing. It's like, maybe I'm thinking of a flight. It goes from Tokyo to Beijing. The from and the to get so small, you almost don't hear a vowel at all. Um, and that's a reduced vowel. It goes from Tokyo to, to, to Beijing, okay? Um, so both the from and the to get very short. Second one, <laughs> I have never petted a lion. Sure, that's true. I have, I've never petted a lion. Even if we try to say the H in have, so we don't contract it to I've, uh, we're still not saying I have, right? Um, we could if we were making a formal speech. For some reason, you're making a formal speech about petting a lion. Um, but if you were just telling your friend, you might just say I have, I have, right? I have never petted. Again, the second E in petted is always reduced. Petted, a lion. And the last one, the station is closed forever. So we talked about station already. Uh, I think you can tell in the word forever which vowel is reduced or vowels, right? Forever. You really only hear the second one clearly. You hear forever. But the first and the third got very small, okay? Um, 
So these words are the words that were just on the last slide that have been reduced. And you probably noticed that these ones are reduced too. And if you listen to people talk in English a lot, you've probably noticed that these are almost always pronounced with a reduced vowel, either the uh, right? Well, sorry, just the uh. Um, there are some times where the is pronounced the, but um, when it's before a consonant, like a, an S or a K or a C or a T or a sound like that, it's always the. It's never the or the or the da. I don't even know what else it would be, right? So it's only the before a vowel, like the opening or something like that. Um, but when it's before an S, like it is here, it's always the. Okay, and that's the cup of mustard sound. Okay. So, um, last slide for this video. So this is a chart of all the vowels in standard American English. Um, we've got E, where it says front close, and there's that letter I. The I is a, a symbol, in this case, that stands for pronunciation, and that pronunciation is E, right? And we've got um, back close, right? We also call that back high, um, which is ooh. In American English, that's always round, right? Ooh. And then we've got uh, just a little bit down and to the right from E is I. It looks like a capital I, um, but that's just the symbol we use for pronunciation. And that's the silver pin sound. And then right in the middle, next to the E, uh, which I'm pretty sure we don't use in American English, is this upside down E that's called schwa. That's the only one of these, it's not the only one, it's the one that has a name that almost every language teacher knows, okay? We all call this schwa, and that's the very short cup of mustard sound, uh, right? It's almost not even a sound, it's like a, uh, uh. like there's no, that's not a word by itself. Right? E is a word by itself, and and ah can be a word by itself, but there's no word. Uh. Okay, but the reduced vowels, again, there are only two, and purple shirt is kind of in a category by itself, but we got the silver pin I, eh, and the cup of mustard I, uh, and silver pin takes over for both E and I, eh, and then this schwa, the uh sound, the upside down e, takes over for all the other, um, all the other vowel sounds. Okay. So this schwa, uh, the uh sound, is actually the most common vowel sound in English because it's in so many different words and people use it a lot in sentences, even if there's a word that wouldn't have it by it itself. Um, when we say that same word in a sentence, we might use a schwa, the uh sound, to replace the vowel in that word. Okay, so again, to recap, there are two reduced vowel sounds, and then there's purple shirt also. It's just silver pin, i, eh, and cup of mustard, uh. Okay, and uh has a name, it's called schwa. All right, so I'll record another video, part two, and uh, hope you find it useful.